something quite exciting is happening in Exeter in May. We're going to be remaking the internet. It's an idea that I've had in the pipeline for some time. Um, last year, I, I had a bit of time on my hands and I thought I'd sit down and, and type the letter A into Google and then, and then begin transcribing the whole internet by hand with pencils and A4 paper, gradually filling up the spare bedroom. I was quite ambitious about it. I, I thought, I'm not going to stop now. I'm going to keep going. And I thought it might take my whole life, but it's worth it because this is important. What if there's a digital apocalypse? And I will have a copy and humanity will have access to this thing and I'll have contributed in some way. So it felt very significant, but after a few days, I got distracted. Ironically, I got distracted by the internet. And I thought, well, well why have I lost motivation? And I realised that it's because I didn't just want to make a copy of the internet. I wanted to be more active than that. I wanted to remake the internet and make it better, to decide what I wanted to put into that internet and what I might not put in, how the things that I selected would relate to each other. I wanted to reinvent it. After the experience trying to rewrite the internet, I, I realised that I need more help. And that's where the people of Exeter come in. I need you to collaborate with me and I'll be running a series of workshops and um, together we'll be having conversations and making judgments and coming to decisions about what this new internet is going to be like. And I'm not saying that our internet, the Exeter internet, is going to replace the old internet necessarily, but who knows? Perhaps our internet can give something back that is missing in the old internet. Maybe there's a need for sensations and experiences that aren't catered for in the old internet. Or maybe we just think there's too much information and the internet has become too big. How can we curate that? How can we condense it? How can we be selective about what matters to us? And so I invite you to join me. I always think about the cable that runs under the sea, the giant internet cable. It's an object, it's heavy, it's messy, it's covered in sea urchins, creatures that haven't even been discovered yet, swim around it and maybe make nests in it. It's not something that's intangible. I mean, there are satellites as well. The internet is beamed around and we can't see it, but it's there floating around with rocks in space. It's, it's, a physical embodied thing and I want to get some of that thingness back. I don't know about you, but that's something that I feel like we're missing with the old internet. But what is the internet? It's a group of computers that are linked together, a conversation between a group of computers, a network of networks. It's becoming increasingly like a human brain. The architecture of the internet is now described as neural, brain-like. So how are we going to build this thing? Well, I'm going to gather lots of materials physical stuff, cardboard and paper and sellotape and pencils and 
we're going to work with what we've got. Because after the digital apocalypse, we won't have silicone chips. We won't have any of the things that we are used to having access to now. And so we'll need to be able to improvise. I have done some research about how to make silicone chips, but it didn't interest me. It did sound a lot like the process of making a sandwich. You slice up a cylinder of silicone, a bit like luncheon meat, but slightly thinner. And then you layer up different polymers and uh, you bake it in an oxygen-filled oven so that silicone dioxide forms. And and then you, you plate it up in a, a packaging unit that, that then allows it to enter the rest of the computer. And... I like that. I like that it felt like sandwich making, but I didn't want to make something out of silicone. I want to make something out of the things that are around me that that anyone could do. It shouldn't be alienating. You don't need an expert to tell you how to make this internet. We presume that the internet is a democratic space, that it's collective and that it's authored by everyone. It belongs to everyone. But it doesn't really. It belongs to just a few companies. And states can say whether something's turned on or off. They can censor things. And I want our internet to be a truly democratic space where all the decisions are made collectively. What do you want to put into the internet? How do you want to remake this internet? What do you value? What do you want to use this internet for? How do you want this internet to change your life, to make it better? So once we've completed this project, once we've remade the internet for ourselves, once we've decided what will go in and how it will work, what are we going to do with it? Once we've solved the threat of the impending digital apocalypse, where next? I investigated the cost of lots of coach trips to try and bring the whole world to our internet, but it seemed unfeasible and it would take quite a long time. But I've had an idea. Why not bring our internet to the world? And so what we're going to do is once we've remade the internet, we're going to turn it into a website and put it on the old internet so people can see it and click on it and stuff.